In previous content, we've discussed some seemingly magical abilities of a low-carb diet and its ability to speed up our metabolism. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend that you check it out so you can see the data for yourself. But let's assume that you have or that you just trust me because I have a trustworthy face. Is it really magic? That's all, folks. Well, no. It's nature. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what's going on based off of a series of other studies that have investigated the underlying mechanisms. Let's dive in. There are two mechanisms at play here. One is based on carbohydrates and the other is based on ketones. So first, the carbohydrates. We witnessed through a simple study investigating the effect carbohydrates have on mitochondrial respiration, which is a proxy for burning nutrients like fat, that a higher carbohydrate diet reduced the activity of mitochondria. The researchers speculated that this action may be due to insulin, but the evidence was insufficient to come to that conclusion. Well, another study that we've dissected did look at the direct effect of insulin on fat cells and not only confirmed the results of the first study, but also explained some of the mechanisms. The addition of insulin to the body leads to not only a reduced activity of mitochondria, but diminished levels of two key molecules within the cells. One molecule, known as PGC1-alpha, is a key factor in mitochondrial biogenesis, meaning the production of more mitochondria. Reduced levels of PGC1-alpha is certainly a strong indication of reduced mitochondrial content in the fat cells, but beyond that, however, the researchers also uncovered significantly reduced expression of another molecule known as UCP, or uncoupling protein. UCP is responsible for making mitochondria less efficient. While I realize that sounds like a bad thing, when it comes to fat cells, inefficient mitochondria can be a positive because it leads to the utilization, the burning of more fat molecules, thereby leading to a potential fat loss. Of course, if insulin reduces both of these mechanisms, there is little doubt that these contribute to the reduced metabolism experienced with carbohydrate intake, as insulin directly relates to carbohydrate consumption. So it's actually this second mechanism that transitions us into another study looking at the effects of ketones on UCP expression. This study we investigated showed that elevated ketones did the exact opposite of what insulin does. Ketones reduce the efficiency of mitochondria, and researchers measured PGC1-alpha and UCP gene expression again and found both to be elevated. These effects would lend themselves well to increasing nutrient utilization, burning, again, like fat in fat cells. This is the direct opposite effect of what's experienced with insulin. Now, taking both of these scenarios in combination, it seems that a reduced carbohydrate diet would reduce insulin levels, thereby allowing normal levels of both genes, preserving metabolism. However, if you were to take it a step further and reduce carbohydrates to a point you could elevate your ketone levels, it would promote the expression of both proteins, thereby supercharging your metabolism. But hey, I didn't even get into the details here, or at least not completely. So if you're ready to nerd out further, I'd recommend my video explaining exactly how UCP functions, or check out the other related content of mine. I'll speak to you there. Bye.